free Jose. Violent crime is skyrocketing in Democrat-run cities like here in New York, and Soros-funded district attorneys are letting millions of lives, uh, millions of people rather, live in fear of gangs and repeat offenders running rampant on the streets thanks to a revolving door justice system. And just a couple of days ago, charges were dropped against bodega owner Jose Alba after he stabbed a criminal that should have never been on the streets in self-defense. But far-left Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg had Alba facing a second-degree murder charge before he dropped the charges a few days ago after a massive public outcry. So talk about a backward system in our next guest uh, met with Alvin Bragg on Friday to talk about how the Hispanic community can work with the district attorney's office to combat crime. Joining me now is Bodega and Small Business Association founder Francisco Marte. Francisco, thank you for being here tonight. My first question for you, you had this meeting with Alvin Bragg. Uh, what did you come away with? Was it a productive meeting? Well, I will, I will say that we had a meeting where we don't see so much product because uh, we, don't, we, don't, we didn't have any commitment with what I asked them. We need to, to be, uh, to charge the criminals. We need to put a charge on the child lifting. We, the bodegas and the supermarkets and pharmacy, we have a huge problems because the people, they be grabbing everything, they like, uh, I can do whatever I want, I will have no consequence. And what happened to Jose Alba is the result of what happened when the criminals are no punished. So any small thing can um, go up to a tragedy, and that's what we have to prevent. But in order to prevent that, we have to punish the criminals. And the DA, they have to start um, to charge the criminals. It doesn't matter how big the, 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 when they commit a crime, it's a crime. and have to be punished, because that's how we can teach them that they did something wrong. And that's how they can understand that that was wrong when they get punished. But if they don't get punished, if they get away every time they do anything, they're going to keep continuing doing it. And that was the same thing that happened with a lot of, most of the criminals or the crime that has been happening there is with people that have a bad record that they've been letting out. And that's not the way that we have to clear the jails, um, putting the criminal on the street and then making harder for the hardworking people, um, bring it to the jail. So that's the, that had to change. So when you were talking to Alvin Bragg, did you get the feeling that he wanted to change things from the way they're going? Or do you think he just made this decision because of the public backlash, not only from New Yorkers, but people all over the country? Yes, I believe so. Uh, he, um, I don't see, yes, like the effort that they, they have. Yes, we want to confront the criminals. And that's the simple question that I ask. Are you going to charge the, the, the criminals? The people that's offending um, or child lifting or robbing the store, um, I didn't have no um, a concrete answer on that. I didn't have a yes. It was rhetoric. And that's not, that's not what we need. We need elected officer that really cares about the public safety, that said we have a, uh, a crisis and violence and crimes. We're going to face it. No matter what, we have to face it being tough. We have to come tough in order now to bring back the public safety. Now, what are the bodega and small business owners in your association telling you when you speak with them about how they're feeling? Do they feel like uh, you're seeing Starbucks now having to close stores in major cities because of crime? Do they feel like, you know, this is a small business. They don't have the same capital that Starbucks has behind them. Are they worried they might have to do the same with the crime? And the way that we are, a lot of the bodegas, the beer uh, owners, they are afraid. Or sometimes they now it's like, you know, to sell the bodegas, it's a little hard because not too many people want to get into the bodegas on um, the, the way that we are facing the, 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 the violence. So that will affect us. And we don't have another choice because we, are, um, we don't have that much resource as those corporations. And we have to do it. But the another thing is like uh, how we will defend if we are the risk to be charged and the criminal be left in, uh, free. And I will tell you something. If it, uh, that happened to Jose, it would happen all the way around. And the guy killed, the criminal just killed Jose. I bet you he would be free the next couple of days. He would be free without, without having a, a bail. 
What do you think is going on in this city if you really want to get down to it? Because we know that there are issues with the bail reform laws mm -hmm. and all that, but you're seeing a constant spike, not only in these violent attacks, hate crimes against certain minority groups. I mean, New York is the most diverse place in the country, arguably. Yeah. But why is this the case? This was not the case a few years back. People pretty much got along. There wasn't this spike in violent crime. And now you're seeing all of this happen at once. What do you think really changed? Was it the politicians or the mentality of yeah. uh, some in the community? Well, I will say that the politician, because the politician is the one who allow or they call for, when they call to defund the police. That's a, the worst decision that they make or when they did uh, the bail reforms. That's the worst thing that happened because that was, they start to like uh, incubate new delinquents, um, motivating new crime, uh, crime, new delinquents to come up because they say, we can act without having any consequence and without respecting the police. We need to respect the police. We need to have orders and we need to, um, the department um, of the police that can um, make the, the, the law to be um, respect. And that's what I believe. We believe that what has failed here has the of, um, electoral officer that we're having, and they were uh, crazy with the way of calling just defund the police and not respect the police. All right, Francisco Marte, he is from the Bodega and Small Business Association. Uh, please keep us posted with your endeavors, and hopefully the next time you have a conversation with Alvin Bragg, things go a little bit more the way you're hoping for. Yes, so. I will, and I will, and, and I hope that, that they really, they really um, face what, the, what is the reality and come with something concrete. Let's get some results and let's do, let's put some charge. Um, let me be realistic. We have a huge problem. We have the big campaign that we say we support the community and the NYPD. That's uh, um, our association. And we need to bring everybody together to have back their public safety. Francisco Marte, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.